So we'll, we'll just take quickly a, a look at some of the trends because I, I think it's useful to do so. The first and important trend, and it's one we don't fully understand, is screens are the number one way that information is conveyed today. This has never happened before in human history. People are desperately trying to understand the psychology of information on screen, how it is processed, how people deal with it, what are its cultural effects, what are its cognitive effects. We don't know. We're in the midst of this, and we're all big. And if you're in print today, and you're not thinking about screens, you're in trouble. <laughs> um, you're, you, you may not even make it to the end of your career, where there's a lot of people just hoping to make it to the end, the end of the career. The other thing that's happening is technological. Everything we do today is now based on internet technologies. All telephone switches have now been switched from telephone switches to internet-based switching. If you're in television broadcasting, you are using the internet to get to your transmitter. Plus, whatever you're doing on top of that on the, in the digital environment. Everything is connected now in this, in this way. Um, it has a lot of advantages. It's cheaper in one way. It has a lot of advantages because it allows you to distribute in different ways. It has the disadvantage in that it allows those people who want to control the system more control than existed before. It's much, if, if somebody wants to pull the knob into their country and say none of this is coming into our country, it can happen. And there's, China does that every now and then. Iran's trying to set up its own inter internal one and have it so they can shut off the external one. India now wants to do it, not because they're, they're afraid of foreign information, but they want their big search engines and other things to benefit economically. So, these, there's, there's costs associated with the technologies that, that we deal with. Um, if you're not in mobile today, you're dead. Um, everything is, gone, is going into mobile. It is the primary way that news is distributed today, and most news organizations do not have effective pay. Peter, I've argued about it with the people at the Globe over and over. How is it that you can have such a good paper that still can't figure out in 2018 how to have a decent app for, for, for the Boston Globe News. Uh, but it's a, it, it's a real problem where everybody's having to figure out how to optimize and do. It's not that simple because newspapers and the layout of a phone is different than the layout of a newspaper. Just photo photography displays different, much less news. We're becoming really active as human beings in the way we use media. Um, and we're not just sitting there passively using anymore. We're clicking through. We're looking for other such things that we can do. And we're using other devices at the same time along the way. And what all of this is doing is making it so consumers can do whatever they want to. And people that are reading or listening or have many choices of where they can go, where they can get the, when they get the information, how they get it. We don't like that from the news side and the journalism side because it means we no longer control the audience. And this is the biggest shift is ch that's happened in the last 20 years is the shift from essentially uh, audiences that were controlled by the distributors and providers to now consumers are having the, big, are having the biggest shift along the way. Um, we're now hitting competitors everywhere. We're in what's called a high choice media environment. We can choose anything we want. It's what people have trouble making choices. Um, simply, and, and the one thing that a lot of research is showing is if you have trouble making choices because there's too much, you tune it out. You tune it out and you maybe make one. If you have 250 channels on your television, as many people do today, you spend 90% of your time with three channels. Okay, all the ones, you're just not, you're not going there because it takes too much effort to get there. That's what's happening on the internet as well with the things that are, that are happening there. And now we have all this distributed content that's going out there in all the various forms um, through all the various social networks and other such things along the way. Um, that's pretty good for marketing, is getting your name out there. It's terrible for trying to do a business. Um, and it's very difficult to make a, a business in that environment. And partly it's because everything in that distributed thing has to go through about four or five choke points that are controlled by for-profit companies who want to make money off of it and are very good at stripping the money off of it. 
and they can strip what they want, and they don't really care what the content producers care, what the journalists care, or anybody else. They're going to do the best that's for them. And right now, public policy doesn't deal with that very well. Normally, when you have uh, uh, media systems or other kind of communication systems set up, governments end up help creating a market to, to, to work effectively for everybody. Governments have not done that yet in the, dig in the digital aid, and it creates a problem. The end result is we keep getting smaller and smaller audiences. And smaller and smaller audiences are a problem because advertisers like bigger and better audiences <laughs> along the way. And so we now have everybody out there just going, come on, pay attention to me. And a lot of news organizations, not the reputable ones, but even digital ones that are, that are getting a lot of attention these days, are doing it simply by basically pursuing the tabloid kind of, of activities that newspapers did, which was catch people's attention. It may be misleading in the headline, it may be whatever, we want to catch you and get you to read us and pass us on. And it is a, it's a huge problem of trying to get this attention. And why do we want the attention? Well, we want the attention because of advertisers. And this is, where, this is where journalists and news organizations separate themselves, okay? Is that the news organizations have always acted. Newspapers in the 20th century were advertising delivery systems. They were not news delivery systems, they were advertising. 60 to 85% of all income for newspapers in Europe and North America came from advertising, okay? And that's what the, the structure of the organizations were, were set up to make it work. Well, what's happening now is advertising is going down, and in the public sphere, funding for public service broadcasting, for other such things going down, and consumer funding is going up. For every euro spent by advertisers today, consumers spend seven. Okay? We're in this absolute shift in, in the media environment. And journalists particularly don't like that, because, well, Consumers can't control this. We have to control it, it we, and it's ours. We know what's right, we want to get out there. And so dealing in a consumer-funded environment is really unpleasant for journalists. Mo motion picture manufacturers have done it for years. So, you know, television people have done it with, with television content for years. But for journalists, this is particularly dif difficult, and news organizations um, find it difficult. The problem has been, despite we think otherwise, journalism's never been viable on its own. Never in the history of journalism has journalism activity paid for itself. It's always been supported by some other commercial activity, by advertising, by patrons, by elites, by others who wanted to keep it alive. And, but we have this idea that suddenly, oh my god, we've got to make it viable business. It's never been a viable business. It is an activity that is carried out for non-business reasons, and we construct something around it to be able to make it, make it funding. And what we see now are, are news organizations of all kinds looking at multiple revenue streams. There are dozens of ways you can make money in this business. Not every organization is going to do all of them, but they're going to pick the ones that are right for them, right for their readers, right for their locale, and other such things along the way. Uh, but it is, it is something that we're having to do now that we haven't had to do for 100 years. But if you go back to the 19th century, the 18th century newspapers, they did many of these other things within the context of that kind of time to, to make money along the way. You have got to create today an organization that matches that revenue stream. You can't be producing events and meetings unless you have event planners and have resources to make it work. You can't be doing these other kind of services, technical services out of your web activities and your IT activities unless there are people in there to do it. So you make a choice. I want that revenue stream. You've got to invest in it. It's going to cost you money now. And that has nothing to do with journalism. That has to do with the organization under which journalism takes place. Um, you can't chase lots of audiences. You go for your prime audience. That's where your money is. And that's why all of the news organizations all over the West today are raising their subscription prices, raising their prices for services, offering um, up sales, special newsletters, special access to additional news and the content and other such things, because that's their prime audience who's willing to pay and are going to, going to deal with it. Um, and you've got to reduce reliance on advertising. Most news organizations today are down to about 40% of their income coming from advertising. 
Um, that's a big difference before the 2008-2010. Um, and you can't be so dependent on it or you will not be able to deal with it. Social media, great for marketing, not great for money. Okay, so you can play with it all you want for, for marketing. But um, you have many companies have built these big social media operations up that are producing very little money. And they are dealing with all these people that are doing designers for social web, but they're not getting the money out. Now Facebook and others are making it more difficult for them to do, make money anyhow. So it's a, it's a problem along the way. Um, you've got to try new things, new products, and they're going to fail. And I just want to give you some general rule of thumb so before we, we end and open it up. Uh, a failure. For every four products that are thought about going into develop, only one makes it to market. When they're introduced to the market, two out of three of them fail. Means you've got about an 8% <laughs> rate of success. Now, news people have a problem because we've worked for news organizations that have been stable for 100 years, 200 years in some cases. And we're not used to failure. We got it right. And now we're having to do things that are going to fail, and it really is uncomfortable in the organization because we never had research and development activities trying things that, that came and went away. Half of new companies, if you're a digital startup, <laughs> half of new companies die in the first uh, um, year of operation, two-thirds by the second, three-quarters by the third. Failure is the norm in this business. Uh, in the last 20 years, the um, the number four ranked failing businesses have been all digital media operations. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a long way. Um, companies don't last. They come. They go. We in, we in journalism have a feeling that our, that our titles or newspapers have to last for a long time because they've been around. Very, only a third of companies ever make it into a second generation of ownership along the way. And even publicly traded companies with lots of money only stay on the stock markets for, for about 16 years. And then they go off and somebody else. We worry about Facebook, we worry about Google, we worry about all the, and we presume they're gonna be there for the next 100 years. History doesn't show that that's gonna be the case. Something's gonna come, come in and, and deal with them. But you will never be able to operate in this new environment if you're not trying new things and willing to fail. And trying things out, if, you know, we always say, Fit, um, fail cheap, fail early, um, it's, it, it's the way that we deal with it. So I'll stop with that and then we can just talk about where we go, other kinds of things that might interest you. Thank you. Thank you very much.